Hello farmers and welcome back to the hills of Tuscany. I need to finish up plowing between the vines here and then I think we're gonna move on to planting more potatoes and then we got some cow work to get to. Let's get started. I really need to remember to subsoil between the vines as I'm pruning at the end of this year. So I'm not doing, well, I mean, I can save myself a lot of time. And the hill here for this vineyard can be a pain in the butt for this tractor when it starts going uphill. It doesn't like it that much. It takes about, <laughs> seems like ages to find the gear that it wants to come up the hill. But I'm just about done here anyways. It's taken me about 15 minutes just to do the vines here. The other vines, as you've seen, doesn't take me that long at all. I do wish that in between the vines, because every year I'm going to have to subsoil it, I kind of wish that the ground texture would change a little bit. So when you go back to subsoil the next time, you can kind of see where you've been and haven't been. Here, unless you're keeping track, it could be a little bit confusing where you've been. All right, Cario, I know you can get up the hill. You just need to find the right gear. There we go. And now we just have to fertilize the vines later on once they grow. All right, so we can lift that up. All right, let's go bring this back to the shed drop off the subsoiler and head over to the Lamborghini and if I remember that potato planter should have a good amount of seed in it so I'm not going to bother going back to the farm oh I need to bring that tractor back to the greenhouses drop that off there park that try to remember to get that tractor back down to the greenhouse even though we're not using them currently i think i left the lamborghini right where we left off which is right here 98 percent full so it's good enough as you see we got this beautiful field of potatoes and this will be the last field i need to plant for the month of march Although I could have waited and done it all in April, but you know what? It's only midday. Let's go ahead on over and start planting this. And then, uh, yeah, I need to take care of a small situation over at the cow barn. And that small situation is, I think we are full of manure. Yeah, I'm full of crap. Uh, well, the, the cow barn is anyways. It says I got 45,000 liters even. So either I happen to check it when it landed on exactly 45,000 liters, or that's the capacity of it. I'm starting to think that's the capacity of that barn, which is really not that much when you think about it uh, for what cows are going to produce for manure. That's quite a bit. And we don't actually have that many cattle in there, but we've had them for a while and I haven't done anything with it. So... I, I don't know. Maybe uh, once we get a full barn, I'll have to empty it out like every other month. So I went on the Mod Hub and I was looking for solutions of how to take care of it without leasing the belt like I do on American Falls and have many other times doing other things. Uh, I am going to grab ourselves a bucket for the telehandler. I'm going to go ahead and just grab bucket loads of manure and put it back to our trailer. I don't know how much the BGA is going to take, the small BGA. But whatever it takes will be fine. I don't need the trailer. At least I don't think I don't need the trailer until harvest season. Which is not until, what, the earliest is June? So I got a few months. And I am thinking in the future, if, you know. I really can't see myself buying the other BGA for $1 million Unless the money really rolls in that fast down the road. Uh, that's a lot of money for a production building 
yeah, we'll get through this flurry of manure a lot quicker. But do I really need that big of a, you know, spend a million dollars on it? I think I'd rather just get myself a slurry sprayer and, or a manure spreader or both and fertilize our fields that way. I mean, it'll be cheaper than buying a $1 million plant. I'll probably end up spending like a hundred grand on those uh, trailers and then I'll have free fertilizer at the same time. Oh yeah, and someone did mention to me about uh, the Ninja trailer for cutting up the sugar beet into cut sugar beet. And I completely forgot about it, honestly. And I was like, what trailer are they talking about? Then I remembered once I saw it, oh yeah, I used that trailer. Now at first I thought it was on East Violin, but I think I actually used it on No Man's Land. That trailer there will be like 51000 so it's cheaper, but it's still not cheap, cheap. Uh, maybe that might be one of the pieces of equipment I might lease when it comes to it. But I won't do it, of course, until we harvest sugar beet, which we just planted this month. So we got a ways to go before that even happens. Uh, but that'll be a, like a one-day thing. And it all depends on what sugar beet we get off the field as well. Our sugar plant is getting through the sugar beet currently at a fast enough rate to where it's not like we're getting to another harvest and it's still processing the sugar beet into sugar. But hopefully this year we'll have plenty of sugar beet to go ahead and of course make sugar, candy, all that good stuff. So we are going to buy a few things today. One, the bucket for the telehandler and I think also the header trailer for the sunflower header. That is still sitting outside the shed and I can't put it under the shed because it just won't fit in there unless I have it on a header trailer to drive it on in. I'm actually surprised this doesn't go through the potatoes a lot quicker. I thought for like a, a, a I mean potato is like a root crop or is a root crop that would go through much more seed slash potatoes. This is about the only time I kind of wish I did get the other planter where I could have done the potatoes with... I mean, it's the same planter that we got, just that it's modified even more to where we can do potatoes, sugar cane, and poplar. But for the most part, I thought I'd be hiring someone to do this, but I don't want... We got we got to switch job once in a while. I can't I can't let Frank Jr. have all the fun planting potatoes. So we only had this field last year as potatoes. Now we got the other one. So we should be next season to have, I would assume, a good amount of potatoes for the oil to go ahead and make those potato chips. And of course, more productions, more money, which makes me a happy farmer. Okay, this field will take a little while to get done. But it won't be too bad overall, especially if uh, in a few minutes here when I put it on a time lapse. I will have to run down to the store to top off and more potatoes to plant. I think I got to do it twice, if I remember correctly, to last season. I wonder if there's a, I would assume there must be, in, in real life I'm talking about, a bigger potato planter than what we got here. I assume the big farms must have much bigger potato planters. Or maybe not, I don't know. I'm not a potato farmer. Although I do love my potato products. And as we can see, the Lamborghinis have no issues whatsoever hauling this little planter around. Which we did use, well, not this particular one, we had a modded one 
for the potato production on Hinterland where we were doing washed potatoes and making pig food with it. Well, we weren't really doing the potato production to make pig food, but that was just a byproduct of what we were doing. And I'm going to guess most of the time, because I don't remember doing it too much, I was probably hiring the Franks to plant the potatoes back then as well. On a smaller scale, this is not that bad of a job, but as the fields get bigger and you only got, what is this, like a 8 meter, maybe an 8 meter wide planter, it takes a moment. Actually, I don't think it's even 8 meters. What is the working width of this thing anyways? Uh, potato technology. It is 6 meter. Compared to our planter, which I think is an 18 meter. So, three times the size of this. But I was quite surprised when I went over to the cow barn. I'm like, I'm just checking on the uh, the side uh, the TMR how they're doing. Didn't really check on the straw because when I walked up to the cow barn, I was inside the cow barn. I'm like, I can see the food, they're fine. And then the stats showed up. I'm like, oh yeah, slurry. How, okay. I was like, wait a minute, it doesn't show manure. I said, I really haven't looked at the manure. So I ran outside, ran around the corner. I was like, oh, okay. Now, I will double check before we buy the bucket for the telly hand. I will drive back over there, turn on the icons, but I do not believe there is a refill point for that. There, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll see where the icons are, and maybe it's nowhere near the manure pit, which would be kind of weird. But we'll have a quick look around. Actually, if you saw yesterday, was that yesterday's episode of American Falls? think so. Uh, yesterday's episode of American Falls with the cows we got there now, I was checking out that barn and I found the manure right away and the fill point for the manure is right next to where the manure was. Well, that's two headlids done. I always like to get three headlands done. About 15 meters of working space around the field is what I would like to get done. Just in case I decide to set it off on a worker, then the worker won't be going off the field and trying to turn around, hitting trees and walls, or doing as AI workers tend to do. But really, it's not going to take us that long to finish up planting the rest of the farm fields that we have with our Challenger and our planter. We only got a few more. I think three in total. We got to plant the sunflowers, the carrots, and the red beet. And that is it. And then it's just basically refertilizing a couple of fields. And then taking care of our grapes. Of course, we've got the grass field we got to take care of. Which, that's not too difficult to do either. And before you know it, it'll be harvest season once again. Here in the hills of Tuscany. And of course, we got more fields this year than last year. So more product, which means more moolah. More money. Well, I'm just halfway through the seed here, so I'm going to get a few more trips around the field done before I got to head off on down to the store and top off with more seed. But I think it's time, about time we speed things up, and I will catch you on the backside of planting this field of potatoes, and we can move on to taking care of the cows. 
I'll see you in a bit. One reload of potatoes and about 20 minutes later here we are almost finished and the good news is that I'm not going to need any more potatoes for this field I'm actually gonna have a good amount to start next season when I go plant potatoes once again uh, if everything goes well it'll be the same two fields I don't think I'll make it I mean you even for sh if we are short potatoes do I want to have a third field Probably not. I think we're going to have plenty. And yeah, there's no other field, I don't think, relatively close to here that I could just merge with this one. Uh, I'm not too sure what's over that hill. I think there's a parking lot there, honestly. But either way, I think uh, the amount of potatoes we got, I think is going to be sufficient enough. Because uh, we're not going to have as much oil moving forward as we did like the first year. This year we should have maybe just a little bit less. And then, of course, next year we'll just have the sunflower field only, I think. If the ratio is working out well, I think that's all we will need. All right, just a few more passes here. I, I am going to come back here and fertilize this after we get done with the cow barn. Because uh, we did fertilize the field before I planted the potatoes in it. And I'm hoping I can come right back in here and fertilize once again. Because I am state changing the state of the field. Uh, because it was plowed and now it's planted so I should be able to fertilize it if I remember that's how it works like I said it's been a while since I've really done farming without precision farming I usually always have that on it's just like the way I prefer to play the game may have missed a small little piece there but overall this field is done. See if I can see that little piece looking back. I think it's right here, if anything. Saw a little discoloration there. There we go. Fold this on up. Actually, let's drive on through. I think I can drive through the chocolate factory. Don't know if I've really been in here with you guys. I can't remember if I have or haven't. Kind of snug going through here. And then, of course, you just drive on through and come out the other side as one does. Then we can follow this road all the way down to where we enter our farmland or our farm itself. I've never gone that way. I was wondering, where does that lead me to? Oh, that leads me to the small little village where I never want to go through because it twists and winds quite a bit. 
through there. I could just uh, yee-haw off the cliff right here and be right into the farmyard. Okay, let's go ahead and put the potato planter away. Currently with a realistic damage uh, system, the implements are not affected from that. So I don't really need to fix our implements. Although, when I read the channel log for the mod itself on, on the website, it does say implements will re be repaired the same as always, but when we look at the stats for our implements, they don't seem to be getting damaged at all. But the mod is a work in progress. And as long as you keep up with your trackers, currently, won't have any problems like I did with the truck last fall where I just ignored it and the truck kept stalling on us while we were trying to deliver down to one of the stores. I think this is where I was parking the potato planter. Well, if it's not, it's where it's going now. All right, well, stop that right there. We're going to grab the T8. Let's make sure on this one, yeah. Does need to be inspected for a while and no damage on it currently. So of all things, we got to grab the grain trailer. It's too bad the forge wagon can't take manure. And let's cruise over to the cows. I'm going to turn on the interactive zone markers once again. Just double, double look around here. Interactive zone markers are on. Alright, we'll open up this door here. So this is water and straw. That is food over there. We know that. This is where we buy the animals. This is where the manure is. Yeah, that total is not going up at all. So unless somehow they tied it into here, maybe that's where we pick it up here because this is where the slurry is. I guess we can try there. It'd just be odd to be that far away from the manure pit. But I guess when you're making the map, you can put it anywhere you want to. I'm not getting any indication where... I can fill it up here. I mean, that should be just where the slurry is, but what am I driving on? I seem to be climbing up over something there. I'm not too sure what. All right, so no place to pick up the, the manure at, which is, it's okay. I would just rather double check, triple check before we go ahead and do this differently. Alright, so the way I want to approach this is, well, I don't want the trailer, well I guess I could have it facing this way for now, but I'm going to go out here and turn around. We don't actually have that much room here. Uh, this farmer won't mind if I just drive in his field for a second. And we're going to park right there. Perfect. All right, uh, turn those off again. We don't need them now anymore, I don't think. And now we need the tele handler, which is here. We'll drop off the pallet forks. Just drop them off in plain sight here. And now we'll head on down to the store. We're gonna buy ourselves, of course, a good sized bucket. And while we're there, we're also gonna buy the trailer for the sunflower header. So I'll see you in a minute. Oh, this vehicle right here. 
Yeah, this has got some damage on it. So this uh, this could cause us some issues today. I might even get lucky with the trailer header that it may hitch right onto the telehandler itself. All right, so it's been a while since we've been in here. Let me go to headers and can I, whoop, nope, sorry, sorry. Don't want to do that. Nope, nope. Uh, combinations. That trailer right there. Do I really care? I'm probably going to get charged for changing the color. No, we don't. No, we don't. Uh, sure, we'll get a yellow one because why not? Uh, so that's 10,500. We'll go ahead and buy that. And then while we're here, got to go down to Telehandler Tools. It's a modded one. Should be this one right here. Does uh, 3,900 liters and it should have manure. Yes, it does. Just want to be sure of that. I could use a... Uh, didn't see what this one does. That does 1760. These are the in-game ones. The bucket does uh, 2640, which is okay. But of course, if you can get something to... A little bit bigger. That's always good to have. Let's go ahead and buy that. Hopefully this will attach right to the telehandler. I would assume it does. Haven't haven't tried it. There we go. Now the question is, is this going to attach to the telehandler? Oh, that is wonderful. Uh, we'll have to drop that off, of course. I don't want to be trying to tow this around while I'm loading up manure into the trailer to bring over to the BGA. So, spending a little bit of money today, but it's what we need to do. Uh, I'll probably get that money back from the manure going into the BGA over time. As we know, it's going to take a while. And uh, it's going to take me a little while getting back to the farm, so I'll see you there. making our way around the sugar beet field probably would have been better if I just went and stayed on the main road and came in a production lane but I thought this would be quicker so just this once I'll have to pick up the header off the ground and plop it on the trailer myself because the combine's up at the farm and we are down here See, turn around, I think. Although the header should shift to either way that it needs to and lock in. Uh, okay, didn't want to do that, but I did. Somewhere like. Oh. There she goes, snapped right on. All right, now we can put this into the shed, get it out of the weather, I think. Did I get myself enough room here? There we go. That shed was made for those headers. All right, let's get up to the farm and start shoveling some crap because uh, that's what I like to do in the springtime. Uh, let's see, to get where I need to go, I think I got enough room maybe to get past the T8 in the trailer. So I already got the grapplers opened up because I really don't need to close it on up. We're not traveling with it anywhere. When I get done with this, we'll bring the telehandler over to our crate and start the inspection, which will take an hour. And then once it gets done, we will go ahead and repair it, and it should be done sometime in the early morning of April.
Yeah, we can squeeze on through here. I just need to figure out how to do this system here. Yeah, it didn't really leave us a whole lot of room to get this done. Uh, is that actually going into the trailer? Am I missing it? I think I'm missing it. So, probably be good if I brought the boom out a little bit. Let's bring out the boom about that far. Don't want to put it out too far ahead of us because then uh, it could get a little heavy. And even though some of it looks like it's going off the side, it's all going on into the trailer. So it does look like a big pile. It's 45,000 liters. And if I'm doing 4,000 liters almost per bucket, it's going to be about a dozen buckets and we will be done. I'm not sure if it's all going to fit into this trailer. I forgot how many liters this trailer is. It, it, it's It's got to be up in the 40s, I would think. So it may take all this manure. It may not. But then again, I don't think the BGA is going to take it all either. And even if the BGA does take... Well, I mean, this action can't be performed here. I beg to differ. Uh, yeah, I don't think the BGA is going to be able to process this manure rather quickly. Okay, that that was not the right thing to do. I'm trying to raise the boom up high enough so I don't get to where it doesn't dump into the trailer. The higher I lift it, the closer my telehandler has to get to the trailer. It's very particular of where it wants to be. So I'm going to extend the boom out a little bit more. So I can really... Yeah, I just want to dump the... Tilt the bucket a little bit more so it empties a little bit quicker. Trying to figure out the best way in the future to approach this. I mean, there is a door there, but I don't know how it's going to benefit me at all. It might actually be better if I had the tractor and trailer facing the other way and parked over there. Because the way the manure is piled up, it's right up against the wall here that I'm trying to turn up against. So I got about a half a trailer so far. I'm going to keep on going until we get a full one. And like I said, I don't think we're going to take this whole pile, but I might be surprised. Well, just a few buckets later, and that is all she wrote for the manure. So I'm going to put that back into there. Let's go ahead and retract the boom. And now I'm going to bring this over to our lovely little crate, and we'll get this inspected. Which will take an in-game hour to do so. Just glad I didn't quit on us at all. It's kind of weird, I mean, we only got an hour on it. I had to say we need to do all this work on it. Uh, start inspection. Yep, should be good. 
All right, now we'll grab the T8. Ah, it's 37,000 liter trailer. Starting to wonder that when I was looking at the manure pile. I'm like, oh, if this is 40,000, that looks like more than 5,000 liters of manure there, which it is. It's about 8,000. All right, I need to bring my truck back up here so I can get more of the slurry out of the tanker. Let's go ahead and empty that on out. And on this trailer here, I gotta open up the back door as we tip. Hopefully it's all going in and it's not tipping on the ground somewhere. Because that would be a little bit of a disaster. Yep. Didn't quite take that much now, did it? Uh, but let's go ahead and get this BGA started. Manure. Activate. Yeah, only holds just a little over 17. 17,200. Must be. Uh, is all it takes. It's not going to hold that much digestate either. But at least with the digestate, I can either store it or sell it. And that's where probably, if anything, I'll buy the slurry spreader first because I can use the slurry and the digestate out of here. Uh, so let's go ahead and I think we'll leave the T8 right there. All right, now I need to find my 130. Did I bring that back or did I leave it? Nope, I did leave it. Uh, okay, I left it here. Not where I thought I would left it, but I'm going to go back to that potato field. I think the, this potato field to the right um, did I just fertilize that one? Did I fertilize this one at all? Uh, I have not fertilized that one at all. So I need to do this one as well. Alright. Well, the main one I want to try first is the other potato field. And I'll do this potato field in between episodes. I mean, it won't take me that long to get it done anyways. So fertilizing before we plant, and then hopefully after we plant, we can fertilize right again and not have to wait for the crops to regrow. It's not that big of a deal, but I want to try it out to see if it does work, which I think it should. Yeah, I do appreciate the comments on that uh, planter, by the way, with the mulching system on it. good to get rid of that because it was deleting the seeds because basically I think the way it's acting as the first activization on that planter would be mulching and then it puts a seed in and then it rolls so as, as long as I keep it activated when I go over a part that's been yes we can fertilize uh, but for some reason I did not leave it on full spread but yeah with the uh, the planter with the mulcher on it if I left it activated or down when I was going over a part that I've already planted the seed in, it was deleting it because that's what a mulcher does. And that's why we got rid of it. Overall, a $2,000 waste because I, I originally paid $2,000 for the roller and the mulcher, so $1,000 a piece. And then I had to pay $1,000 to get rid of it. Go figure. So this potato field is all set until harvest. We don't have weeds in this series. I turned weeds off along with stones. Stones is one of those things when it was added to the game, it sounded. And it was kind of fun in the beginning, but unless you really... Uh, I, I guess you want to use a mod, I think most people probably would. There's going to be those few people out there that want to keep it 100% realistic. I understand that. But picking up stones just uh, after a while, it's like, yep, yeah, that's not my thing. I don't mind it. But if I got to do stones liming 
fertilizing, weeding. It is starting to get to be a bit too much, even though uh, I was just talking about it recently, I think in American Falls, was that yesterday? Maybe yesterday? I don't know. I think so. Um, I was asking them on the new part farming simulator to bring out where we got to do like pestify, uh, pesticides, pesticides, and, 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 you know, keep bugs away and keep uh, like fungus away from the plants. But all those options should be like everything else where you could either have it on or off. Because being a brand new player, if they, if they were to add something like that, which I, I'm sure they're going to add something, the question is what? Uh, but adding all the stuff, and if you're a new player coming into Farming Simulator, it could be a bit too much to know every little thing. So whatever they add, I hope they do have the option of being able to turn it on or off, or else new players are going to find it I don't want to say too difficult. Yeah, I'm going to say too difficult. Because uh, it seems easy for most of us who've been playing for, you know, years. I've been playing since uh, just before FS15 came out. And I think that was October of 2014. So, okay, I just realized I've been, I've been playing almost 10 years Farming Simulator. But you get someone new to the game, they see all this stuff. Unless they're watching farming videos a long time, they would know the steps and procedures. I remember the first time I went to plant a field in FS13, and I couldn't figure out why the planter was not planting, because I didn't have a direct drill uh, and all that stuff, and I didn't take care of the field I just harvested it I'm like okay let's replant I'm like why won't this plant and back then I wasn't uh, I wasn't smart smart well I'm a little bit smarter now than I was then not a whole lot but uh, I wasn't smart enough to go on YouTube or anything like that and actually I'm not sure how many people were making videos on FS 13 back then have no idea so the potato field is done. The cotton field is all set as well. Wait, let me double check on that, but I believe it is. It is. It be good. It's all set. So now I just need to get one stage on the potato field that we were just parked at. And then the sugar beet field will need it once the crop grows. Uh, not everywhere, but most places I think that little square in the center that does not need fertilizer but then of course we are going to be planting sunflowers and carrots and red beet and we're probably going to do that really really quick with our challenger and our lovely planter we'll get that done so quick um, I think it'll probably take up very little time but I'll be in next episode because we are at the end of this one Yep, that's where we're going to wrap it up for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. And I'll catch you again right here in the hills of Tuscany. But until then, have a good one.